Tracking is really this natural human ability that we have to look and listen and observe and ask questions and use critical thinking to put all the pieces together in order to tell a story. And uh, nature is full of stories. Uh, everywhere you look in nature, there's a story. The only question is whether we're able to see it. And um, tracking is really the art of seeing the stories of nature. And uh, really, it's, it's a mindset. It's a way of engaging with the natural world uh, to turn your senses from the inner chatter of your thoughts and your, your, uh, you know, your ideas, to set that aside for a little while and just turn your senses outwards and um, experience something outside of yourself you know get wrapped up in the stories of the animals for a little while deer track in sandy mud you can see the two toes but you can also see that there's a a second track right there so from this we can we can see that the animal was walking in a direct register and the front foot here and the hind foot here they are also they're sort of pointing in different directions. It is possible that this is two different animals um, sort of moving together. But if I follow, if I look for a trail out this way, you know, following the, the point of the, the one that's a little bit askew, because I can see there's another track right there, and there's another track right there. Um, but if I follow this one out, I don't really see anything. So it's all one trail. And uh, therefore we can tell that this is, you know, this is the front and this is the hind. I first got into tracking because I was looking for a way to improve my experience of the forest. And I, I had been spending time out in nature through most of my life. Um, but never really doing it in a conscious sort of way. You know, I started to notice that the way that I engaged with nature actually had an effect on the experience that I had. So there's a big difference when, when you go into nature and you're actually being intentional with your senses, being intentional with how you uh, look, how you listen, to actually slow down and um, just notice what's happening around you. And uh, when you engage your senses in that way, that is really tracking. The first stage of tracking is learning to open up and, um, and, and just see what's in front of you and ask some good questions about, you know, what is this, what is this telling me? And, um, you know, how can I put the pieces together here? And uh, so a lot of times people think about tracking as, um, this very defined thing of like looking at tracks on the ground, um, you know, impressions of feet in the mud and the sand. Um, and that, that definitely is tracking, but it's just one small part of a much larger um, field of study that can take you on, on uh, really interesting adventures and discoveries and, and really dramatically improve the way that you feel when you're out in the forest and uh, the connection that you feel with the land when you're out there. We can really do tracking anywhere, you know. You, you might look at this forest and think, this is not really a great place for tracking because I don't see any sand, I don't see any mud. Um, you know, how are you supposed to do tracking in a place like this? But there's actually a lot that we can do, um, especially when you expand your definition of what tracking is and, um, and just take on the mindset of critical thinking and detective work and, um, you know, asking good questions and, and being curious about our surroundings, you know, we can just start by making some basic observations. We can observe that um, this is a deciduous forest, you know, just right off the bat. Um, there aren't a lot of coniferous trees, at least not large ones. And, and that actually in and of itself is a pretty interesting thing to notice that there are coniferous trees here. There's little pines um, spread throughout the forest, but if I do a little pan here, what we're not seeing is 
any large pines. You know, all the pines here are, are quite small and young. They're just sort of regenerating through. And um, that actually tells us something about the history of this forest. It tells us about the, um, uh, the development of this forest in terms of how suitable it is for different types of animals, you know, what kind of food sources are going to be found in this forest. And really what it tells us is that at some stage in the history of this forest, uh, you know, something changed in the landscape of this forest that either removed all the old pines or um, somehow brought in um, a younger generation of pines that weren't here before. And, um, you know, by tracking back in all of that, uh, we can start to learn things about the landscape. And, uh, you know, another thing that we can notice here is that all these deciduous trees, um, they're all pretty much the same age. You know, they're all pretty much the same size. If we look around, we're not seeing you know, if we just take this um, this closest set here of of trees, we're not really seeing any trees in the whole forest that are any bigger than these. So to give you some context, you can see that this is the you know this is my hand on the tree, and uh, you know compared to how big trees can get, uh, you know this is this is really not that big of a tree. So we can step back and we can make some good observations about the forest and we can say something happened in this forest that resulted in a situation where all the trees are like medium age or younger. Um, probably at some point in the past this whole area was clear cut and um, it was allowed to regenerate in, and it regenerated in this particular way um, and uh, the pines which are maybe a little more shade tolerant are now starting to come in and so all of this tells us really important information when we're out tracking just go into your local forest and um, and ask yourself what can I track here maybe it's you know animal footprints Maybe it's something in the patterns of the trees. Maybe it's something in the plants. You know, you notice the plants are growing really well in one spot and the plants are not growing very well in another spot. Well, what, what's happening there? What is that actually telling you? And um, do some tracking in your local area. Just ask some questions. Notice what you are feeling curious about and start to investigate, you know, start to investigate what you can discover in that place. And um, Notice how that changes the way that you feel as you get outside and you explore uh, your local wild places. And um, let me know what happens. So I'm going to carry on my journey here in the forest and uh, really appreciate you watching. And I look forward to talking to you again very soon.